as you can see, everything is nice and quiet now. But that's because of the Sony camcorder. I came out, brought my dog out today. And we've got all these people employed suddenly that have been my neighbors, some of them, for five years. Never had a problem. Most recently, though, they arrive and they're not just using their cell phones. They're photographing. They're filming. They're, they're recording. They don't use film anymore, of course, but they're recording. In five years, people I've never had a problem with suddenly have a new type of employment. They're investigators. And this, this camcorder, the reason my husband purchased this camcorder for me was due to people that fancy themselves some kind of investigator. That's just one faction. There fa there's many factions of people involved with the stalking, with the harassment, with the slander, with making sure they drain your battery and line their pockets. These people are fools. They really are fools. You, you probably couldn't tell them that, though, because they're so indoctrinated, so brainwashed. But what has helped me tremendously is the Sony camcorder. All I had to do to put a stop to the parade of fools today was bring this camcorder out. This one lady's walking her chihuahua. I've got a chihuahua the same color. My, my dog is a little different, but same breed. Never had a problem with her. Today, I, I get up to go in to make a cup of coffee, and she had just passed my residence, and she drops everything. The dog's leash, the doggy bag, and her camera. See, as and this I had to ascertain by continuing to, to observe the situation. So I'm thinking, okay, Abby, you've never had a problem with this lady. Never. That you're aware of. So as soon as people, because I have a wall on either side of my porch, as soon as these people filming me, not filming, there I go again, videoing me, get past me, they stop and they send the photograph. Now granted, there are times when people are just texting or they're just, that's just what they're doing because that's what people do now. They can't put the cell phone down, you know, it's like an extension of themselves. But in this case, it wasn't. She walked way that way, continued to walk, come back to my front walkway here because she missed getting my getting me videoed before. She missed me because I'd gone up into the house. So I'm sitting here and it, this is the same routine every time if they are actually seeking to photograph. So as soon as, like all the others, she thinks, okay, she's sitting back, she's not paying attention to me. She gets what she thinks is out of my view due to the porch area having a wall on either side. There she goes. She's sending the photograph. I shouldn't have to. I don't, I don't follow people around and do to them with, with, with video and, and such. She literally came back because she missed her opportunity. And as soon as she gets past the wall and I lean forward and she thinks she's way down the road, there she is sending it. This is my neighbor, and she thinks she's an investigator. She probably actually believes that. Now, whether the harassment is due to narcissists on, an, on a personal, you know, that's their personal dynamics, or they've gotten on board and they fancy themselves an investigator, whether it was a, an ad on Craigslist or they got caught up in the, in, in, in the penal system, this is what they do. But now, it's like a ghost town out here. But before I brought the Sony camcorder out, 
I had every fool in the world over here getting paid. And when I ask them, you know, and these are these are neighbors I've never had a problem with that are that are crawling out on me now. I looked at one. She's got two two male dogs out of the same litter that she walks all the time. Never had a problem in all these years. I don't know, was it a month ago? So I say to her, because I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna be stupid for them. I said, What do you do for money, honey? What do you do for fun? Because I noticed you know, never, this isn't low-income housing. We have people that live here. I don't know if the lady still lives here. She owned her own plane. This person is one of the people that lives here that's doing pretty well financially. It shows. Well, I guess that's how she supplements her income. And when I said that, not, you know, purposely just saying it to her, she could, she could interpret it what I said any way she wants to. She turned around, and you want to talk about validation. Oh, she hadn't been bothering me much lately. She tends to stay far back. But right now, see, you see, you see the difference? I know who the neighbors are that jog and walk that aren't filming me. Sometimes people go by and they are listening to something on their phone, or they are just communicating with a family member, or they just feel safer. They can call for help if they have a health problem or whatever. But there's a very significant percentage of people that they don't question. They don't think independently. They're just on board. They just jumped on that train. Well, there's an old saying, you can't stop a train on a dime, but you can derail a train. So choose wisely. And whether or not you consider whether or not you'll be held accountable at this time, and it's just my personal faith, I believe you will be held accountable. I believe I will be held accountable. And what about the sock accounts? Oh, the sock accounts. It's the same it's the same harassment but taking a different approach. Oh, it's so peaceful now. And that's why I brought the camcorder out. I got tired of it. I mean, do they really think, I mean, I can, I've got 30 plus years. I've got 30 years just here in Arkansas, okay? Do they really think I'm not familiar with the tactics? Think about it. And they take something very beautiful. And with malice aforethought and full intent, they destroy a person's peace, if, if possible. That is the goal, if possible. Well, thank you, so Sony. And it's a shame. It's just a shame that to come out and sit, um, um, you know, this is this is what it's come down to, to just come out here and sit and enjoy the moment that we've got clowns on parade. Now, when this started, and I'm, I'm just going to go back 30 years ago, every recording device I ever purchased was damaged. When they come in, they break it or they steal it. I wouldn't recommend giving up. Why? Because eventually, eventually, you will prevail. Usually, if you want to protect something, you have to carry it with you. And then you have to be very guarded, even then. But I know, because I used to have to take everything I valued with me and keep it right next to me. Please don't give up. And you're going to have people out there that, though they they're, might be on the receiving end of the harassment themselves because we're all 
we're all under this weight, we're all affected by it, you're going to have sellouts. People that, while waving a righteous flag, they're flying a righteous flag, right? That's for appearances. You can't trust and believe every person you meet just on their, their say-so, their word. They, they allege, they cl make claims, but are those claims substantiated? There will be people experiencing the same things. We're all, we're all going through this, these changes together, but you're going to have people that do better themselves to make life easier for themselves. They will step on the face and neck of others. And I, I see it, and I then I have to sit and wait for other people to catch up because I don't have the right to tell other people what to think. If someone's gracious enough to be tolerant of my opinions, my ideas, I, I can't help but know that they deserve the same respect and courtesy. But watch out for the fakes. Watch out for the posers. And, and to expect that you can reason with a poser. If, 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 <clears throat> if you have a completely different outlook, if your goals, your core beliefs, that which is precious to you, that which is important, that which matters, if you're interacting with someone that is at total odds with, you, with how you conduct yourself, how you live, don't expect a different result. Uh-oh, here comes Squirrely Squirrel. Squirrely Squirrel's watching the dog, because... Where'd you go, Squirrely Squirrel? This is such a terrible camera, I can't even... There he is. Hey, Squirrely Squirrel. Yeah, you look like that little runt. So... I'm a patient person. I'll wait. I'll wait for y'all to find out, but I just hate to see anyone do a crash and burn. I hate to see, you know, everybody spinning their wheels in place. Oh, but that's okay. Because what's more important is that people understand and, and snap to what's going on. That's what is more important. Not my, not my little feelings. And it's a shame. It's a shame, but we're going to have people make attempts to hijack anything good, anything productive, because the truth is not in them. They do not care. They're like, pay me, give me, ask me to think. Oh, why would you ask me to think for myself? You'll offend them. It's us versus them. Well, they don't fool me anymore. They don't. The recent theft of property was a trophy. It was a trophy. These, these, can you believe that I have some of the same stalkers going back to like almost, well, let's see, 24 years ago? The same group has reared its ugly head and is, is on me. They've got friends at the PD, so it doesn't matter unless you stop having a license and find some form. Uh, alternative form of uh, identification you're not you're not going to be able to escape these people because they've got people with the PD they got people in the government that say okay here's your target so I'll just do my best to remain patient while others which they have the right sort things out for themselves but one of your best friends is documentation. A, a lot of court cases, people don't understand. You may know something's true. You may be a, uh, an eyewitness. But unless you can show documentation, unless you have evidence, you're not going to prevail. Don't give up. If they've broken every camera, as soon as you can, get you another camera. Oh, here comes one of my neighbors. He's not one of them. It's really sad to see them infiltrate my neighbors. I, I live in a very nice community. The management is top. <clears throat> they care for the units. They take care of the property. 
and no one, it's not tolerated, harassing your neighbors. So I, I imagine, and this is just my musings, that I'm not going to get the normal type of harassment in here because this is not an environment conducive. If you harass your neighbor while living here and you're unreasonable, they'll put you out. So the best they can do in here is to gossip, spread lies, build, you know, start little fires, and then, oh, you're an investigator. Well, enjoy your investigation. Enjoy your payments because they're going to be the most costly. And this is only my opinion, but they will be the most costly. There's another neighbor. I don't want to intentionally film my neighbor being intrusive, but she's got the cutest little dog. We're all going to pay. We're all going to answer. Some people, they don't they don't share the faith that I embrace. And, and it's sad. I have met atheists and agnostics that exemplify better moral standards than people that profess to follow Jesus Christ. Yeshua for those that are offended by the name Jesus Christ. This is the best, this is the best that it gets. You either cope with it, you face it, you address it, you deal with it, or lay down and be a victim. I don't I I don't I do not embrace a victim mentality. I know people consider me not just ugly physically, but think about this. My nose has been split from my forehead to my lip in half, like east and west. Every doctor that saw me for any reason would look at that x-ray and say, "Oh, that's never going to heal." What did I ask my doctor when I had no choice but to get some skull x-rays? And she knew where I was coming from. I was just smiling. I said, how's that nose? And she looks at me and, my gosh, it healed. I said, I knew it. You have to have faith that you'll heal. You have to have faith that you can continue on. Enter the stage, the perpetrator. Whether it's because they're mixed up, messed up, or because they're being paid. They want to destabilize you. They want to rob you. They want to drain your battery. And a lot of times, narcissists really love it. The tares, T-A-R-E-S, really love it. When they can make us miserable, when they can destabilize us, when they can drain our batteries and just uh, an attempt to destroy our faith, uh, that's their purpose. Whether they're on board knowingly or just inadvertently because I'm an investigator, it doesn't matter. They're going to answer. Wow, i got so many little baby birds this year. It's unreal. There's, and, I, and I'm using this garbage camera. And I'm so sorry about that, but they're so sweet. There's nothing that you can do as far as controlling others, but do strive to be the master of your own life. And I think one of those methods that we can employ is to recognize what we're seeing in real time when we see it. And when in doubt, from a safe place, use objectivity. I didn't want to believe. When I stepped out and she had missed her opportunity because I'd stepped in because I can't burn the tea kettle up, my dog's barking. And she had passed my, my walkway and was about... By, well, just past that lamppost, you see, sticking up past the tree. She drops everything. And I go, is that a cell phone I see? And she had missed her opportunity. And I thought, oh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. We've been neighbors for a long time. But she walks down out that way, finishes her walk, comes back this way, and starts to walk this way. And when she gets past this wall, like all of them, when they snap my photograph, when they think they're far enough down, because, you know, I just leaning back, enjoying myself, then they're 
sending that photograph. I've seen him do it with the watches with the camera. This is not something new. And I don't confuse every person that's chatting or listening to music or We've had one, one man out here the other day with his phone. He was photographing the beautiful blooms on the trees, the crepe myrtle. And uh, there's some new trees they planted directly across. Very, very beautiful. Some, um, what are they? I can't remember off the top of my head uh, the different trees they plant. But they have very beautiful blooms when they're blooming. So you're going to have times when you're triggered, but use your objectivity. And you will be able to recognize the difference. And it's up to you how you, you cope with it. To me, this is one of my best friends. My husband got me that. Oh gosh, I've been here five, probably seven, eight years ago. Six, seven years maybe, I don't know. And it stops them dead in their tracks. I mean, I, had an, I have a neighbor down there that's like, I call them Trace Sistas. Trace being three in Spanish, because they're all a bunch of grifters and drug addicts. And people will say, oh, well, the one sister, she's a bit retarded. The doctors found some retardation. Well, it hasn't affected that grifter demon in her one bit. She's, I mean, talk about blame shifting and lying. Well, she always has to have people feel sorry for her. She had this friend that worked at the VA, a nurse, they would always come over, and and for some reason, narcissists have to, they're the victim, they're the victim. They'll badmouth everybody, this person did this, this person did that, and they're no good. That's what they do. So I got so tired of this lady that I didn't even know pulling up and walking like an angry steer towards me, like she was going to get me with her horns, and I had never spoken to this lady. This lady had never spoken to me. I knew it was the the narcissist's mouth, pity me, pity me. So one day I went out and sat under, under the tree, tree right over here, with my camcorder when she showed up because <clears throat> she definitely was trying to intimidate me because she honestly believed she was protecting a friend. But she was protecting the friend from something that didn't exist. Her friend hated the fact she couldn't grift me. When you when a when when a grifter puts their moves on you and it doesn't work, it makes them more determined. It really offends a grifter when they can't hoover you in. A narcissist is a major you know, grifter, they're kind of the same because they have to hoover you into their game to get the better of you. From that day on, I let the video cam, you know, she, I never had a problem with her because people don't want these actions to become evidence. And so she chilled out completely. And so I spoke to her one day. We never had a problem after that. She realized, she, she recognized I was not the, the person I was portrayed to be. Oh, that wind is beautiful. Get, get recording devices. I gave this one person that came here and brutalized me, got here and strong-armed me from the start. I gave him glasses that had hidden camera in them. I gave him brand new clock radios, or at least clocks, that had even night vision if all the lights were out. You could either run it for a duration or put it activated, you know. They went online and made fun of me. Didn't say what these, oh, she gave me a period of glance, gave me the clock. Why didn't you tell the truth? Why didn't you tell the truth? They called me cheap. Why didn't you tell the truth? I took you to the best restaurants when you were here. You, you chose to eat garbage. That was my complaint. I don't, especially not going to feed a child garbage. You ever seen what happens with McDonald's food? It doesn't break down. It's not real food. At least not when they get done with it. People, people unfortunately lie. And we're all choosing, 
where we're at. Where do we stand? I can't get over how quiet my street is right now. All because of... Thank you, Sony. Yes, I have neighbors that like to walk. It's one of the few pastimes, but we've never had this much activity before. But they all disappeared when the Sony camcorder showed up. Now, I don't intentionally point my camera at people and invade their privacy, but enough is enough. And you can bet the lady with the chihuahua, next time I see her, I'm going to use the zoom lens. And what I ought to do is put a goat head wall of shame a goat head wall of shame. Once I know that this is a stalking behavior and not simply somebody, you know, exercising their their right to to walk down the street and do as they please. If if I'm positive, if there if the patterns are there, that's what I really need to do is a goat head wall of shame. I just don't have the it's not in me that's why I never use the the hidden cameras. You know, it's just, you know, the one in my home I should have. But my husband remedied the break-in, so I never had to use it. And I had two of them, and I gave them both away. My husband was so effective at dealing with these scrounges, as he called them. I didn't have to. I bought them because I didn't want to bother my husband. And then my husband noticed, why do you have this? What's going on? So I told him he said, no problem. He dealt with it. My husband is no longer here to deal with it. And he fully expected me to carry on. He told me in front of every medical provider how much he loved me, how much he felt I deserved to go on and be happy. He, The poor man felt bad that he was leaving me behind. That's another thing. You, you cowards, you attacked my husband. You were shooting. My husband it was not a whiny little boy. He was a man. He was not perfect. He had flaws. I have flaws. and But he wasn't a boy. And they attacked him in the nursing facility. Two grown male nurses, and I knew something was wrong that day. I had a friend with me. And she saw me, and she witnessed, I said, something's wrong. These two guys sitting out here in the smoking area behind the nursing home, staring, the looks, those are evil looks, and they're up to something. And my husband said, that's okay, go ahead and go on. Go on, you need some rest. That's all you've done the last year is drive and do for others. You've worked yourself to death. Go home and get some rest. I go home and get some rest, and... I call the nursing home. I know something's wrong. I wake up, I call the nursing home. And the nurses, the one nurse says to me, I, I warned them. I warned them you, they better not hurt him. I warned them not to hurt your husband. You deal with him. I said, just tell me where my husband is now. Well, he was in intensive care. Where they When they take you in and they have to sta stabilize you. They jumped my husband in the nursing home when they knew his medication. He, and, and they knew in his weakened state that he wouldn't be able to fight. And, and, but they waited till he was out cold. Yeah, that's pretty chicken. He had confided to me before, right before he had to go into nursing, that they were shooting at him. That's why, I don't remember if it was one or two years, all he said to me was, don't come out to our property. I didn't ask him why. If he wanted me to know, he'd have told me. I just, he knew he could trust that I would comply. All right. When you, and I knew when he wanted to talk about it, he would. And I found out what that was about. And shame on you, Jethro. Yeah, Jethro. I don't even know your name. I don't want to know your name. When the police asked me with all the thieving, when... Shannon Townsend was here, and he was part of it, too. I said, I don't know my my niece's husband's name. I just call him Jethro. That poor that poor deputy was, did everything. He, he, he took everything he had to not burst out laughing, because they knew why I said that. People, sh you had 
how many years, Jethro? If you wanted a, if you wanted to confront my husband, who was all man, and you were a real man, you wouldn't have been driving by shooting at him when you know he's in his property asleep. But that's you, Jethro. A boy in a man's body. And when you threatened me with all those young bucks, didn't work, did it? Didn't work. You you deliberately, with all those big four-wheel drives, thought you were going to block me in, and I could. I had to do a prisoner extraction on my own husband. Well, you knew what was getting ready to happen if you tried that crap with me. I wasn't quite dying yet, huh? You sure moved those trucks quick because you understood. I was going to take and drive through your truck and push it into the ditch if that's what it took to take care of my man. One of the few people in my life that my husband told me he ever trusted was me. One of the few people that I could trust told me my his trust was well placed in me. So all the cowards in the world you'll answer. If you're a coward, you'll answer. But I think the final straw was two grown men and don't think I don't remember you trying to beat my husband to death in the in the nursing home. That didn't work out real good either. Well, he has no choice. He has to go back. I said, no, he doesn't. I'll convene a grand jury. I may not know how that's done in a three-party court system. This is only a few states with the three-party court systems. I said, give me five minutes, doctor. Give me five minutes. Tell the chief of staff to expect me. Because you will not send my husband back to a nursing home to be beaten on while he's unable to protect himself. Don't care if you think he's got it coming. Don't care. It's cowardice. These people had years. They've been trying to get him since he was a young man. Not when, not while I still have a breath. And then I sit here and I still feel grief. I still love him. And the same wolves he was protecting me from are surrounding me again. No, I'm not putting up with it. Keep it up. Every one of you, every one of you will end up in, with a place on the goat head wall of shame. Bring it. I'm not running. I I can remember I had homes paid for. I had to get in my car and drive west just to get away from the clowns. Twice. Twice.